Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, today, we will start off with installation and configuration of SQL Server 2019 for hosting in the Citrix databases. So as you can see, SQL Server normally sits in the control layer uh, of the uh, CVAD environment. Uh, let's go back to the Zen Center. And I already built the base OS uh, for SQL. Uh, so I've created uh, a Windows Server 2019 VM uh, called CVAD SQL 01. Uh, I've, I've, we need, I've already attached few disks, but we need to just format the disk. So before we start up the installation, I'm just quick, going to quickly partition some of my disk drives uh, for the SQL up here. I've got four disks attached and I'll just make sure that they are all GPT. Just doing okay. Uh, let's start with the first one, uh, disk one. I'll call this guy. SQL data. And I want to make sure that the allocation unit size is set to 64K, which is the best practice recommended for SQL. And I'll click on next, click on finish. Uh, I'll do the same on the other volumes as well. Just create that, call that F. We'll call this one SQL logs. And again, I'll make sure that the allocation unit is set to 64K, click that. Real quick, finish uh, this one. Uh, this one is my, this is for SQL temp databases. Uh, and again, 64K, finish. And last is the backup. Uh, this can be left at default. Okay, so that looks all good. And now if I go back to my, so you can see that I got a data drive where I'll, I'll make sure that the SQL data will sit. All the logs for SQL will normally sit in my F drive. But the, the temp databases for SQL will sit in the G drive. And I've got an H drive where I normally have all of the backup files configured in there. Uh, so I've already downloaded um, the SQL Server 2019 OSO on this box. So I'm just going to mount it and we'll start off with the uh, setup. As you can see that the SQL Server Installation Center wizard had started. I'm just going to click on installation on the left-hand side. And as this is a standalone SQL Server, I'm not building up a cluster. So I'm just going to click on the first option, which is uh, SQL Standalone Server Installation, a brand new fresh install and click on next. I'll click on next and I'll accept the licensing terms and conditions and click on next. Click on next and make sure that uh, Microsoft updates uh, and downloads the latest files that it requires. The setup. And in here, all that I require is, I just require the database engine setup and I require the client tools connectivity. I might also pick the client tools backward compatibility list and SQL client connectivity. Uh, yeah, I'll make sure that all of the root directory still sits on my C drive. I'll click on next. I'll leave the default instances as MS SQL Server and click on next. The next step, uh, we will be configuring a couple of parameters for SQL. Uh, I've already uh, pre-created few SQL accounts that I would like to be using uh, to log on. So I will just change it from the default NT service SQL service account to the domain account that I have created.
uh, I'll make sure that I change the startup type to automatic. Uh, I'll do the same for the when their account is well, leave that as automatic. And I want to start that as automatic. I'll also make sure that I grant perform volume maintenance task privileges. Uh, I won't change the collation method because yeah, that's what we want to set it to. Set it to you can also set it to 100 because that's like yeah, you can also set it to 100 CIAS, which is recommended, but I'll just leave it to the default at the moment. Click on next. Uh, I want to make sure that the authentication method is set to mix mode, which means that uh, my SA account and Windows authentication both are allowed to connect to the database. I'll add the current user in because he's a part of the main admin. Uh, here, I will be changing the database directory. So I'm going to point the SQL data uh, onto a new drive under E. Uh, the log directory uh, would be pointed to the log directory which we created earlier. And the backup directory, I'll point it to SQL backup H drive. I create a folder called SQL backup in there. Uh, temp DBs, yeah, I want to move the temp db location as well so and sql temp i create a folder call remove that the logs will be sitting in that same drive i'll leave the max uh dop settings to what it is because it has two cores uh, i will configure the recommended value of 09 and i'll click here to accept and i'll click on next and i'll click on install this should normally start off with uh, the installation uh, of all of the uh, parameters that we normally defined uh, as you can see that the installation has just started i'll just pause the video for a time being and come back once the entire wizard is completed so as you can see, uh, the uh, SQL setup has just completed successfully. And I'll just click on close. The next step is I would go ahead and install the uh, SQL Server Server Management Tools. I've also pre-downloaded uh, the tools uh, on my machine. So I'm just going to run the setup. I'll go ahead and click on install. At the time of installing, the latest one that I downloaded was 19.3. Uh, yeah, if there's any other latest and greatest, I would encourage you guys to normally go ahead and download the latest one and install it on the same SQL box in your lab. So the installation has just started. Uh, we just wait for the install to complete. So I'll just pause the video and come back once the wizard is completed. So as you can see, uh, the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio has been completely installed. Uh, so I'll just click on close and let's unmount this and try to uh, load uh, SQL Server Management Studio and try to connect to the database. Uh, I'll just uh, I'll make sure that I still use the Windows authentication and I'll click on connect. And hopefully this should connect to the database there you go so we have all of our temp database and if we have a look at the properties so the box as well uh, we got 2019 standard edition installed uh, i'll quickly just disconnect and try to also connect using my sa account uh, that we used while installing just to make sure that i'm able to connect and that looks all good so i'm happy with the install uh, uh, I click on exit. 
In the next series, we will start off with installation and configuration of Citrix delivery controller in high mobility. Uh, thank you everyone for watching this video. Asala Vista from Citrix Sage. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Thank you.